welcome back. All right, in this tutorial, we're going to be starting to build some joinery, uh, dados, grooves, rabbits, and we're going to do that with the push-pull tool. But before we do that, I'm going to show you a couple more tricks and a couple things that will make navigating around your models much easier. Uh, one of the first ones is, you remember when we built, and we built the side, we built these shells, we immediately grouped everything together. Well, you can also group groups. So let's say we wanted to move this whole bookshelf. I can select the whole bookshelf and then move it from there as one unit. Or, when everything is selected, you can right-click and you can always make group. So now the entire bookshelf is a group. So now I just have to click once to select the whole thing. And again, moves like normal. But, what if I decide I wanted to move these shelves now? See, now that it's a group, I can't select these shelves individually. Well, there's a little trick here. If you double-click, that takes you inside the group, and you can see it built this dotted line around this box. So now you're inside that group you made, and now each of these individual objects are selected again. Now, let's say we wanted to, say, resize one of these shelves with our push-pull tool. Well, you see that little crosshair there? You can't push-pull a group. You can only push-pull, like, a raw face. But, since this is grouped, we can just double-click, and now we're back to our raw face again. You see this double-dotted line? You have the big one around the whole bookshelf, and then you have one just around this group. And now we can get to our individual sides again. So now we could push pull and change the size of our shelf if we wanted to. To get back out, you just click anywhere outside the bookshelf once, back outside that group, and there, back outside the whole group again. All right. That comes in really handy as you're grouping, uh, you can group sub-assemblies together, keep them one piece, and then go back in and make a little change you need to come back out, work with the whole piece again. Um, another tip here is for our movement tools, our camera movement tools. So by default, you need to come back up here, you need to select orbit, you need to come up here and select pan, you need to come up here and select zoom. I showed you one trick, which was to use your mouse wheel for zoom. Well, most my mice let you actually click the wheel. And in SketchUp, when you click the wheel in and hold it, that actually selects the orbit tool. So you can easily start orbiting. You can come in here and do a move, and you can switch over to an orbit, and you don't have to keep jumping up to grab that tool again. Uh, once your mouse is held, go to orbit. If you then press shift and hold it on the keyboard, that turns into the pan tool. So you can orbit around, quickly pan, orbit, pan, orbit, pan, and never have to go back up there. And then zoom in, zoom out. This especially comes in handy when, let's say we want to move this. We wanted to move this bookshelf here. We wanted to move it a few feet this way, but we can't see where that's going to end. Well, if we press the wheel, we can rotate around and then continue our move. When I let go of the wheel, the bookshelf's going to jump to where my mouse is, like that. But you just have to come back up to that axis and keep moving. And if you needed to, you can do the wheel, do shift, pull over. It's a little buggy sometimes. You'll see it kind of pops in and out, but it's still there. You know, it's got a few gaps in it. <laughs> but as soon as you let go, you're mouse wheel, it'll pop back in. So, And then undoing, so if I wanted to undo that move, I can go up to Edit, Undo, or you can do the standard shortcut. I'm on a Mac, which is Command-Z, and on Windows, that's Control-Z. And if you ever want to redo something, Control-Shift-Z, put it back where it was, undo, redo. So that comes in handy as well. All right, so let's start building our dados. So we're going to Continue with this bookshelf. We're going to put these shelves into dados all the way down the side. So let's go in here, and if let's say we wanted to delete these shelves, which I do because I'm going to start over on these sides, instead of going in and then deleting, you can also just click on a group, right click, and this is a pretty dramatic name for what it's about to do, but explode just ungroups your things. So now these are each individual pieces. And you could ungroup a shelf and bring that back to its faces again. Remember that. So, let's regroup this, and then we'll delete these. Oh, let me show you one more tool for, one more trick here for selecting. Uh, by default, you know, you can select, you can draw a box and everything to select the entire object like this. Well, there's actually two ways you can drag. If you drag from the left to the right, that tells SketchUp, what I want to select has to be completely contained within this box. So by default, it's completely contained, it selects the whole bookshelf. Well, if I drag it like this, it only selects this side, because only that side was completely contained in that box. Likewise, if I did up here, only this shelf was completely contained. Only these two shelves. 
If I do here, it does the whole thing. If I do here, only the three shells. But if you draw from the right up, or right to left, it's any object that touches anywhere in this box. So if I do that, it'll take this side in the shelf. If I go up here, it'll do those. If I do the whole thing, just like the other way, it'll select the whole thing. And there's a little visual indication that you see that's a solid line, and this is a dotted line or a dashed line. So that would help you, let's say we wanted to select all these shells. We can't do it this way because they're not completely contained, but we can go this way and select them. Delete our shells and delete this side. All right, so let's build some dados here. So remember we looked at the tape measure tool, which allows us to do our measurements. But if you're not, if you start the tape measure on a face, you can actually draw what's called a guide. You see that dotted line there? And that guide will stay on the page and let us build, and then SketchUp will use that guide as an additional hint, just like the edges and the corners are hints. It'll let you hint up to this guide. And just like anything else, you can type as soon as you start drawing this to to hard coded a dimension. So I can go three slash four, and it puts it there at three quarters. Now when I draw a rectangle, I reference off that edge. And I don't need to type. Remember in our last tutorial, we typed 12 comma three quarters to get this shelf started. Now we can just draw it to our guide. And you'll see there's our little indications X that you're at the intersection of a, of a side in this guide. And I can draw out like that from my shelf. But I don't want to draw out. I want to draw in to build the dado. So what we're going to do here, and this is this it, this will uh, explain why I recommend grouping everything. So I'll start inside here. And I'll show you, and this will become clear once I do it. I'm going to build a dado, and remember our push pull tool here. Well, you don't only have to pull out; you can also pull in. And that's how you build a dado. It simply chisels away that part of the model. So it's in like that. And just like any tool, you can type one slash four for one quarter inch. And there's a one quarter inch deep dado or rabbit because it's on the edge there. So, but if I try to do that same thing, I'm going to undo, undo. If I try to do that outside the group, so when the whole thing is selected, we'll draw a rectangle and we'll walk to our guide and we'll push pull. You see that? How it doesn't actually cut away. I'm actually building a new rectangle inside that. See that? So if you need to modify an existing model, you can't modify it as part of a group. You need to go in, double click, and you'll see these faces are selectable. That's when you need to draw if you need to modify an existing piece. Let's come up here, and I'll do my data. And I'll do it at one quarter. Now with that method, I actually typed in one quarter, but another method we could do is draw another guide, and this time I'll draw the guide on this face, and I'll draw this guide in at one quarter inch. So I have two guides. I have one guide that I drew earlier at three quarter inch, you can see it there, and I have another guide and now it's attached to the edge. So now as I draw my rectangle from here to here, and I go to push-pull, I can push-pull and it, it, SketchUp wants to give us our references, so in, once I get here, boop, it snaps out, snaps out to that extra guide. Let's see it here, so I could pull it out, pull it come up, snap it right to there. And there's our data. And I'll come back outside the model. And now that you're done with your guide, you can actually delete these guides. So click here and delete, click here, but that's another little gotcha you have to watch out for. So because I drew this guide when I was inside editing this model, this guide actually becomes part of the group. So when I come outside here, this guide, you can see it's selected, it turns blue. It's actually part of the group now. So now to delete this guide, I actually need to double click in, select the guide, and delete. You can see that happens occasionally as you're drawing guides and you're not keeping track of where you're, what group you're inside or outside of. You'll kind of attach guides to the wrong object, but it's no problem. You just need to double click to get inside there. And you can actually double click, like I double clicked on this, on the model to go inside. You can actually just double click on the line if you needed to, so the guide even allows you to double click on it and delete. So there's one dado. So let's build the rest of them for our shelves. And a guide, the nice thing about guides are they actually act like anything else. So I'll re, let me redraw this guide. In this case, now we're locking to that edge because now the dado has formed its own edge there. 
So what I'll do is I'll move and copy, press Alt, and just like before, I'll bring this up to the top here, and then I will go slash four, and we'll split out our guides, and then we'll make a three quarter inch dado on each. Now I only have a top reference to go against. I don't have a bottom one for my three quarters, so I could draw another guide, or I can type. So I'll do three quarters, comma twelve. Oh, I made a mistake. Did you notice? I forgot to go into my group, so I can't dado this. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to go into my model. Make sure my face is selectable. Now I'll draw my rectangle. And three quarters, and twelve. Three quarters and twelve. One here at three quarters twelve. And one here. Oops. Now see that's one of those ones that was backwards, so I wasn't paying attention there. I need to watch in my dimensions box. That actually needs to be twelve comma three quarters. There we go. So we'll pull each of these and go, we have to start going in the correct direction. In this case, it's tough at the zoom level. See that? It wants to snap between those two. So if we zoom in here a bit, you know, we'll pan. That gives us a little more room to play with there. In this case, I've removed my one quarter inch guide. So in this case, I'll just type one quarter. And then we'll scroll up here. And we'll push pull to one quarter. And we'll scroll up. And push pull. One quarter. There we go. So there's all our dados for our shells. We'll come back out. And here's all our guides. Remember this? We'll select all these guides. Delete those. All right, so there's our side. So let's make our copy. And oh, I forgot to press Alt. You can press it afterwards there still. And I'll move him. And remember from last time, we have to actually have to go 18 and 3 quarter inches. Now we've got our side, but our dados are facing the wrong way. So we actually want to rotate this side around. And we can do that easily with a right click here. And you can say flip along. So there's groups red, groups blue, and groups green. And this is a little confusing. So this red, blue, and green correspond to these axes, the ones that we started with, red, blue, and green. But it's kind of tough to remember which one is which. So I just sort of pick them until it rotates the way I want. And if it doesn't work, I'll just undo it. <laughs> In that case, red is what we happen to need. So there, it rotated along the red axis and flipped it. So now it's facing our other side. And then we'll build our shelves. Now to build our shells, we'll have to build them into the dado. So we'll go from, make sure not this corner, but this corner inside the dado. Over to here. And we'll push pull that across. And just like last time, we'll triple click this and group it. And we can move these up. And you'll just, again, you'll need to watch that you're not moving it there, you're moving it there into the back of the dado. And this is when it helps to have those shortcuts to pan and zoom so you're not constantly flipping back up to the toolbar. There we go, so we're back to where our bookshelf was. Now this wouldn't be a great tutorial if we didn't improve upon that a little bit, so let's build a back. So we'll rotate around behind. And we'll draw a rectangle for our back. And you can see, it, show, it looks like these shelves are showing through, but they're not really. But it's because this we haven't given this three dimensions yet. It's still just a flat sheet of paper, so it's sort of see-through in SketchUp world. But as soon as we pull it out, and I'm going to make this a quarter inch deep, so one slash four. And actually, let me show you a trick with that dimensions box. When we pull this out, we don't necessarily have to go 1-4, we can also go 0.25, so it accepts decimals as well, same thing. It's handy when you're typing, let's say, 100 and a half inches, instead of saying 100 space 1-2, slash 
you say 100.5, a little faster. And we'll group that. There we go. So how about let's build a face frame on this as well. Let's do that quickly. Come over here. And the face frame is going to be. And this helps us sometimes you can even exaggerate what this is going to be so that you can check your dimensions box and see. So they're the longer dimensions first and then the shorter dimension. So I'm going to make my face frame one and a half inches wide and three quarters deep. And we'll pull that up and we'll reference the top. You can see it, that little dotted line on the face. And we'll group that. Move it. And it helps so we know we're going to want to reference this outside corner, so we'll move from the inside corner here. Move it out. And then we'll build a frame on the top here. Oops. And in this case, again, the longer dimensions first, so I'll make 1.5 by 3 quarters. This cross. And I'll just draw another one rather than copy that one. Five three quarters. There. And we'll group this. And we'll group this. And there we go. And now I've got a bookshelf with a little face frame there. Looks pretty good. So our bookshelf is coming along nicely. Now you remember I did that slash four trick in our last tutorial to divide something by four. Did the same thing with the guides. Well, there's another one we can do. I'm going to group this as one big object. Oh, well, before I do that, let me show you. So this is a good example. So we can select just the face frame, let's say, and make group. Now you can actually move the face frame separately from the rest of the bookshelf. And later on, we'll learn how we can actually show and hide just the face frame. So instead of it, instead of moving it to another spot, we'll just hide it so we can look inside and then bring it back when we need to. But so we'll group this. And let's say we wanted a series of bookshelves next to each other. But in this case, we don't necessarily know the endpoint to divide. We just say we know we want four bookshelves no matter what. So we'll select this, we'll move, we'll copy, and we'll go to here. And just like I did slash four before, now I'll do x4, so times four. There's four bookshelves, four copies of the original. So we can select all of these, move the copy, and come up, let's say. Let's say we want four that way. Got a whole wall of bookshelves. Very quickly. There you go. Before I go here, let's do one more thing, sort of a variation on our dado technique. Let's undo these, go back to our single bookshelf, zoom back into him. Let's say we wanted this back. Instead of it being just tacked on the back, we want to rabbit him in the sides. How would we do that? Let's ungroup here. Let's delete the back, we can remake him. So my suggestion is going to be, let's create a rabbit by extending this out. Let's say we make a half inch. So go into this group. There's our side we can push pull. Let's draw us another rectangle down here. And he's going to come this way. And we sort of need to get him we need to get him started in the direction we want him to be before we use our, our keyboard trick here. So in this case it's 24. He's going to be a quarter inch wide. And we're going to push and pull, but instead of push and pulling in to make a data, we're going to push and pull out. And we're going to pull out one half inch. So you see now, if you look at this side, this is a solid, it's still part of the original side, but we basically rabbited it, rabbited, rabbited it out. <laughs> and we'll do the same thing to this side. In this case, I've already copied and built my shell, so it's probably a little more work to delete all this and copy when we can just redraw that data. This time we'll do it with a guide here. We'll draw a guide in at one quarter. And we'll draw a rectangle. And you can see, so this is one of the things SketchUp does, is it tries to anticipate what dimension you want to move in. In this case, it, it thought I wanted a flat plane, sort of the plane that I built the shelves along. 
So it'll think that until we give it a hint again. So if we bring it back to our guide, see now it's a vertical hint there. Let's come back down. And we want to make sure he's on there. So we're going to zoom in to make sure. There we go. And then we'll come out again. We're going to come out a half inch. Okay. And you can see how when we're zoomed in here, the rest of the model sort of grayed out because we're double clicked into this group. So we'll come back out and we'll build our back here. This time we'll make sure that we start from here and we'll come down to here, right there. And we'll pull out a quarter of an inch. There we go. So now we've got our back on. And he's inside a little rabbit there on the back. So SketchUp is all about creating solid blocks and sort of cutting away or adding to them to create the shapes we need. And our next tutorial, maybe the one after, we'll do dovetails, which is still just another variation on it. We just start drawing lines at different angles instead of just straight 90 degrees. But, all right, stay tuned.